allowed us to see. And we are thankful and glad in it. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Yeah, we're doing things a little different today. So if there's anything that you want to sow or give at the end, we'll do that at the end of service. You can do it on the way out. I just want to get right to the word on today. How many are thankful to see another Christmas morning? I want to remind you before we get into the message today that church will be closed this coming week. Uh, and but I want you to meet me here on uh, for corporate prayer at eight o'clock in the morning for our New Year's Eve. It's going to be corporate prayer at eight in the morning, and the church is going to be open from eight to twelve. Uh, you can drop off your prayer request for the year. I'm asking you that if you can find time, sometime on New Year's morning, uh, to come with your family between the hours of eight and twelve. If you can't make eight o'clock corporate prayer, come at least before twelve and come to the altar and pray with your family for the upcoming year. I believe, matter of fact, I know that prayer still changes things, amen? So we wanna invite you to come out to do that. Listen, I, I wanna be mindful of your time. I wanna thank you so much for, for coming out on this Christmas morning to, to, to celebrate with us. I have a quick word that I just wanna deposit into your spirit and it can be found in Luke chapter two. Luke chapter two, I wanna pray for those this morning that are living outside. I know we have people that are watching online. Some of them are in sunny states. God bless you, <laughs> amen. But for those of us that are in the cold, I, I wanna pray uh, for those that um, uh, may not have homes or shelter. Uh, it's times like this that we should be so thankful for what we have. Because there's somebody that would love to be in your shoes. And so we're thankful this morning. God has been better than good to us. And so we want to be mindful of those that are outside, those that don't have food today. We want to pray for them and ask God uh, to use us to do something for them. Amen. Let, let, let me say that again. We, we often ask God to do it, but God works through people. So my prayer is that God will use us to be a blessing to them. Amen. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. I'm going to read a little bit there, and then I'm going to get right to the word there. Luke 2, beginning at verse 1. I want to welcome all of those that are watching online this morning, those that are home with their families right now watching, on us, watching us online. We, we, we thank God for you, and we bless you on today. Luke 2, beginning at verse 1. If you have it, signify by saying, I got it. Where do the Lord reads? And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Carinus was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judah to the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Somebody say all people. For there he is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen. To th this morning, family, I just want to talk to you for a moment using as a subject, the promise keeper. I need you to say this with me this morning. Say, he is here, he is here. 
That was cute, but I need you to say it like you really believe that he was born for you. I want you to say it again. Somebody shout, he is here. He is here. Now give God a hand clap of praise right there. <laughs> Father, we thank you today as we come in your presence. We dare not begin anything without first acknowledging you. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for all of those things that you've blessed us to have. We thank you for those things even that sometimes we, we take for granted. We thank you for health, for strength. Some of us, Lord God, were sick throughout the year, but you brought us to this very moment. We thank you, Lord God, for being the God that lifts up our bowed down head. Some of us, Lord God, have loved ones that was with us this time last year and may not be here this year, but we thank you that you are with us and that you've kept our hearts. You've comforted us. And so we've come today, Lord God, not out of form or fashion, but we've come to lift you up. We've come in each in our own way to tell you thank you for all that you've done, for giving us the greatest gift of all. And so we bless you. Have your way in this service now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Be seated. Somebody shout as you take your seat. He's here. Yeah. Family, we, we celebrate this day um, that our Savior was born, that he came into the earth as a baby. And we, we can celebrate because what we needed, he provided. I need to say that again because I, I, I know it's easy for us to get, to get stuck and confused with all the trappings and all the festivities and things that are going on, but, but I don't want you to miss the big picture that this day represents the fact that what we needed, he provided. Because he was born, now you and I can be born again. And because we can be born again, now his spirit can abide in us. Let, 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 me, let, let me go back because I, I want to make sure you get this because th th this, is, this is more than just about a day on the calendar. I need you to understand that what makes this day so significant to us, family, is the fact that he was born, that now we can be born again. And once we are born again, now he comes and he lives in us. So the greatest gift gave us a gift. I don't know about you this morning, but the reason I'm so excited and I have so much joy in my heart is not because of what was under a tree, not, not because of any gift or any card, I appreciate it, but, but the reason that I'm so excited is because I'm glad that he abides in me. Because he abides in me and in you, he can fix what doctors can't even diagnose. Because he abides in you, hear me family, he can heal what medicine can't fix. Because only Jesus Christ can heal the sin sick soul. I wish I had some witnesses in here. I'm excited this morning, family, because he, 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 he lives in me. I, I thank God for that because sometimes um, I may do some things that I know what I should be doing, but I'm glad that there's somebody that's living in me that reminds me how I should be doing it. I'm glad that he lives in me because there's some forgiveness that I should extend to people that I don't always do. There are some places that I shouldn't go, that I sometimes go, but I'm glad that somebody lives in me to convict me, to remind me this is not where you're supposed to be. And so family, as we celebrate this day, I want to remind you that what actually happened on this day is that the word was made flesh. The Bible tells us in John 1 that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. 
He was with him in the beginning and through him were all things made. And then it goes on in verse 11 and says, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But we are here this morning celebrating because we did receive him. We receive him as our redeemer. We receive him as our Lord. We receive him as our savior. Come on, somebody. We receive him as a father to the fatherless, as a mother to the motherless. We receive him as bread on the table, as clothes on our back. We are here this morning because we receive him. I need somebody to shout, I receive him. Watch this. Well, watch this. I, I need you to get this. Here it is. We, we're going home. I know we got greens on the stove. Watch this. <laughs> Hundreds of years before Christ was born, God spoke to his prophets, letting, letting them know who he, was be, who he would be born to, letting him know the manner in which he would be born, and letting them know, watch this, where he would be born. Okay, okay, let, let, let me give you some scripture. He spoke to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 23, 5 through 6. Write it down, read it when you get home. He says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. Then he says in 6b, now this is his name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. He spoke to the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 7, 14. And he said this, watch the text. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. You miss your shout. Over 700 years before Jesus was born, God spoke to Isaiah and told Isaiah that he's going to be born, conceived by a virgin. I wish I had somebody. He also spoke to his prophet, Micah, in Micah 5 and 2. He says, but you, Bethlehem Ephrathite, though you are little amongst the thousands of Judah, Yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. I wish I had somebody in here. What I'm trying to get you to see, because I'm trying to redeem the day. I'm trying to redeem the time that we're in. I'm so glad that we were able to cook chicken and dressing and macaroni and cheese and candied yam. I'm glad we was able to eat deep fried turkey and all of that. But I've come today to redeem the day. The day is about God keeping the promise that he made to his creation. And I need somebody to be excited that we serve a God that when he speaks a word, he stands on the word that he has spoken. So here it is, here it is. This Christmas, what, what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment and I want you to think about all of the things that God did. <laughs> I want you to think about, here it is, Lewis, all the steps that God took to make sure that the word he spoke came to pass. I've come this morning with a simple assignment. I need you to remember that you're not here in this place today or watching online because you've been so good or you've gotten it right. If God would have given you what you deserve, you wouldn't be here today. The car wreck would have killed you. The sickness would have taken you out. The cancer would have took your life. And some of you would have taken your own life. But God was faithful. Watch this. Watch this. I, I have to. I have to redeem the day. 
watch, watch this. This is what your God did. He planned it. He prepared it. And he performed it. <laughs> but watch this. Watch this. Here, here it is. Here it is. I can't take long. I got five minutes. Here it is. Come here. He planned it. He prepared it. Then he performed it. Watch how he planned it. To make sure. Here it is, Zena. That Jesus was born where he said he would be. It just so happened that the governor called a census. A census is when everybody in the land had to report to one place to be counted. It just so happened that the governor called a census at the same time that Mary was about to give birth. And to make sure that Mary gave birth in the same place that God told Michael she was going to give birth, Everywhere they went to try to find somewhere to spend the night, it was booked. <laughs> Everywhere that they went, they couldn't find room. And the Bible says that there was no room in the inn because she had to give birth in the place that God said that she was going to give birth. So she had to give birth in a manger in Bethlehem and not at her house in Nazareth. I wish I had somebody in here. Why? Why? Because it had to go down exactly the way God planned it. Come here. Let me talk to you. Because some of the stuff that you are experiencing in your life it had to go down the way that it went down so that God can fulfill the word that he spoke over your life. It was not by chance that you lost that job. It was not by chance that you had to move to this city. It is not by chance that you had to end that relationship because God will do whatever he has to do to get you to the place that he needs you to be to complete his word over your life. Come here, let me talk to you. It had to happen exactly the way that it happened. <laughs> oh, God, help me in this house. So there are some relationships that had to end so that his purpose for your life could happen. If he got to close doors, he will close doors. If he have to move people, he will move people. If he have to part Red Seas, he'll part Red Seas. If he have to bring down Jericho walls, he will bring down Jericho walls. God will move whatever and whomever he has to move so that his plan for your life. Somebody shout, he planned it. Here it is, here it is, here it is. He, he planned it. And, 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 and I need you to catch this. Watch this. Because... Mary did not give birth in the same season that she received the announcement. She had to wait nine months before she birthed what was promised. She had to go a period of time feeling what she couldn't see. She could feel it, but she couldn't see it. Because God wouldn't let her see it until the time is right. Come here, let me talk to you again. Because I believe I'm speaking to some pregnant folk this morning. Somebody that's sitting in this sacred place called sanctuary or somebody that's watching online. I've come to tell you that you're pregnant with something. And God is not going to let you see it until it's time for that thing to be birthed. How do I know I'm pregnant with it, Pastor Luke? Come here, let me tell you. You know you're pregnant with it because every time you go somewhere you shouldn't be. Or do something you shouldn't do. Or think something you shouldn't think. You will feel your baby kick. 
just to remind you this is not where you're supposed to be I need about 23 folk that's listening to me this morning said preacher you're talking about me I had something I was gonna tell him but my baby kicked I was gonna give him a piece of my mind but my baby kicked I was gonna throw in the towel but I felt my baby kick I need somebody in here that know that you're pregnant with something to give God a shout in this house you're pregnant with something you're carrying something <laughs> that's why things are happening the way that they're happening you're carrying something come here I got to redeem the day you're carrying something it did not just happen by accident God's hand his providential hand is over it the entire time and even what the enemy meant for evil God is going to work it out so that his plan for your life will come to pass come here I'm almost where I'm going here it is this is why you got to have well, watch this some Elizabeths in your life yeah you, you, you have to do, you have to take a deep intrinsic look at your circle before we get to next year. Because you can't tell everybody you are pregnant. Some folk, when you tell them that you are pregnant, they will begin to say you arrogant, you such and much. You will know it all. They don't want, see, watch this. When Mary told Elizabeth that she was pregnant, Elizabeth's baby leaped. See, see, whenever you pregnant and the person you talk to ain't pregnant, then they not gonna have anything encouraging to say to you. But when you speak to somebody that's just as pregnant as you are, your being pregnant is going to make their baby leap. And I've come to tell somebody that God is going to shift some things around in this season. So you only speak to people that are just as pregnant as you are. God is going to connect you with somebody that's going to hold your hand through it. Did you hear what I said? God is going to connect you if you have faith enough to believe with somebody who's going to hold your hand until you give birth to what God put inside of you you need somebody by God help me to preach this thing right you need somebody to hold your hand when you want to give up you need somebody to tell you push in the house push until that business gets off the ground Push until you finish with that degree. Push until you break that nasty habit. Is there anybody in here that believes God is going to connect you with somebody to help you push? Watch this. So here it is. God planned it. Then he prepared it. Yeah. God help me. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Give me, give me two more Baptist minutes. Watch this. Then he prepared it. See, there is a slight difference between planning and preparing. It's a slight difference. Planning is when you're getting it ready. But preparing is when you're getting you ready. Because when this thing that you're about to birth comes to pass, you must understand that it is no longer about you. It is about what it is you're about to give birth to. God, I wish I had somebody. You must understand that when God uses you to birth this thing, that some things have to shift in your life. That you can't do the things that you used to do. Not and keep this baby. You can't do the things that you used to do. Not and keep this business. You can't do the things you used to do. Not and keep this marriage. When God birthed what it is he's going to birth in you, you have to understand sometimes I got to feed it before I eat. Sometimes I got to clothe it before I get dress you got to be so dedicated to the thing that God is birthing down on the inside of you that nothing in hell can stop you he, he's, 
getting ready to birth something in you. That's why your circle's getting smaller. He's getting ready to birth something in you. That's why folk in your own family don't understand you. He's getting ready to birth something in you. And when you're getting ready to birth something, it can't be a lot of people in the room. Sometimes you got to ask some folk to leave the room until you've given birth to what God has promised. Nothing that's happened in your life has caught God by surprise. He was planning. He was preparing. I'm done. We can go. Here it is. And, 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 and then, then he performs. He has to plan and prepare before he performs. Some of us are so greedy, we want it now. And we haven't prepared. If you have it too early, there is no milk. There's no diapers. There's, there's nothing that you need to sustain it. I've come this morning to tell you that that thing that you're pregnant with, God is going to bring it to full term. I've come to tell you that this day is more than just about getting a gift under the tree. This day is more than just about who gave you a gift and who didn't and who called you and who didn't. What I'm trying to get you to see, God has more that he wants to do with you. And when he births that thing, I need you to be patient with it until it matures. It may not look like what you thought it was going to look like. Please be patient. God is not through with you yet. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of man can become the sons of God. And I want you to know we're done. I want you to stand all over the building. Sing it again. Sing it unto the Lord. Sing it unto the Lord. God has, God has smiled, on me. smiled on me. He has set, he has set me free. With all the things that I've gone through this year. Oh, God, God has smiled on me. He's been good. Lift your hands all over the building. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us the greatest gift of all. We thank you for not leaving us nor forsaking us. We thank you for making us pregnant with something. Pregnant with potential. Pregnant with possibility. We thank you today. And so Father, we redeem this day and we make it about you all again. I ask right now, Lord God, that you would bless your people. Strengthen those that are weak. Lift up every bow down head. Remind them this day that he who has begun a good work shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we love you today. In Jesus' name we pray. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord our God cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bless you and give you his peace. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and bless our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. God bless you. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you. God bless you. He has said. He has said.